Hi hey everyone, we are talking lab 10, I believe we're on, for Homo sapiens, understanding the structure of the human body. And in this lab, we'll be looking into the organ systems and, and we will be concentrating on one organ, organ system, the skeletal system. So let's go through all of them and their form and their function. And then you can watch videos on the um, skeleton as it is presented in skeletal form and you can get a feel for what you need to do in your lab. So in terms of this, we are going to identify the major body organs, the organ systems, which are groups of organs that work together to produce a function or several functions, and the body cavities that they are housed in. We are also going to identify the major bones of the human body, that's in another video, and assemble a human skeleton, that is in another video as well. So to go over this, we are looking at the classification of Homo sapiens. And when we talk about Homo sapiens, that word is part of the classification itself. In fact, that is the genus Homo right there, and the species is sapiens. So we have taken a very broad classification and narrowed it right down to our specific species. And as you might understand, a species is a selection of uh, organisms that can breed together and produce fertile offspring. So this is a very, very narrow, um, a narrow funnel that we have here for naming domain and kingdom, final class, order, family, genus, species. Right? So you know that you go down from the broadest, the most inclusive classification, domain, all the way through kingdom phylum, we actually have a subphylum, class order, family, genus, species, to narrow it down. We're going to go over each one and we're going to try to make it easier for you to remember by some memory cues that will help you along the way. So when we talk about domain, we've already talked about domain in lab. We are the domain Eukarya, as opposed to Prokarya. Let's review. Eukarya is Greek for true, and that's pretty easy to remember, you and true, and actually they're very related. And Karya is Greek for kernel. And when you put those together, true kernel, what are they describing? They're describing the nucleus. So in the broadest, most inclusive classification, Homo sapiens is in the classification of eukarya because we have a nucleus in our cells. Then when it comes to um, kingdom, you know that we are the kingdom animalia. And we are noted as the kingdom animalia because we are a multicellular heterotrophic classification. What's a heterotroph? A heterotroph is from the German word for other. So homo is same, hetero is other. They're kind of opposite in that. And then trophos is the Greek word for feeder, as in troph that you're eating out of sometimes if you're an animal, heterotroph. So this means that these organisms eat other organisms. In other words, they eat other organisms for their uh, nutrition. They do not produce their own fuel like a photosynthetic classification would. These are heterotrophs. That is the second classification down that we are um, that we are involved in. When it comes to phylum, we are of the phylum Chordata, and that may be news to you, but you're going to find it easy to remember because it's all about the cord and the cord meaning the beginning of the spinal cord and these organisms all have presence of what is called a notochord the notochord is an early skeletal support for a dorsal or along the back hollow nerve cord so that, as you can see, this is the beginnings of a spinal column that involves a skeletal protection and the hollow nerve cord that can house a, um, a nervous system. In addition, uh, cord, chordata also features 
a post-anal tail, and pharyngeal slits or gills, you might call them. So if this looks to you like a polywog, or if this looks to you like an eel, that is why we are related to these organisms. But chordata refers to cord, and it's the beginning of the spinal column. Um, you might ask, well, where are our gills? We don't have gills. Those gills are seen in the embryo and, and in the human embryo. And during development, those um, gills actually turn into um, parts of our ears and some of the organs and tissue around our neck. So we do have remnants of this. In terms of um, the subphylum, our subphylum is vibrata, and that is talking a little bit more about the spinal cord that is enclosed in the vertebrae, which is the type of skeletal that differentiated out. So while the chordata looks at skeletal protection for the nerve cord, this is saying that that skeletal protection actually falls into vertebrae that have a shape to protect the spinal cord. Um, the spinal cord. Um, mammalia refers to the fact that a smaller section or classification nourishes young with mammary glands for milk. And this also, mammalia classification, also refers to the fact that there is thermoregulation or um, monitoring the temperature of the organism by metabolism. Rather than relying on external heat sources like a warm surface or the warmth of the sun, we can rely on our own fuel to produce metabolism. Mammalia also refers to the fact that um, mammals have um, hair on their body as well. That's part of the thermoregulation. That hair obviously helps out in animals that have more fur, but it also helps um, protect us from cold as well. Like your hair standing on end is actually trying to trap heat uh, uh, along your skin. So that is a further narrowing of the classification. We are Eukarya, Animalia, Chordata, Verbrata, and Mammalia. Let's go a little deeper than that. And we can get to the order of primates. In primates, we're really restricting things quite a bit because we evolved from tree dwellers. We evolved from apes that had fantastic gripping hands and feet and opposable thumbs were part of that in terms of fine motor. So ours are much finer than what you'll see in apes, but the start was in with the order of primates. Um, we also developed with primates forward-facing eyes that became more refined as the classification started to narrow down. Um, primates are known for their larger brain, and they're known for having nails rather than claws. And those nails are represented uh, like as a tool as well. So that is our order to get down to primates. We are Eukarya, Animalia, Chordata, Verbrata, Mammalia, and primates. Let's keep going. These narrowing of family genus species gets really narrow and they are related. And so they're related in that um, Homididae takes the flat face that really helps us with our vision and it helps us to um, um, because be, use our brain more with our vision, with that flat face, eyes facing forward, helps with stereoscopic version and with depth perception, since both eyes are in the same plane. Um, color vision also helps us with our, um, our food and protection. And the big one for, um, the big one to remember for hominidae is that we are bipedal which is two, by, and pedal is feet. So we move on two feet, like pedestrian, bipedal is moving on two feet, which gets us a little higher off the ground, 
so we can see and protect ourselves and see food as well. And so the big thing with the family in here of um, hominidae is that we are bipedal. When we really start to get into the genus and species, it really depends on our brain and what our brain can do to produce speech. That really sets us apart in the genus. And what really nails it is the fact that in the species, these, um, these species can intermate and have fertile offspring that usually tends to find a, um, other characteristics that include the chin, the high forehead, and sparse body hair on our, uh, on our species. So I hope that this narrows it down. It should a bit for you. And in terms of that, um, we can also look at the fact that our big brain allows us to adapt to many different living situations. One of the characteristics of being a homo sapien. So we are known as a generalist species because we can generalize our experiences to adapt to many different environments. That generalization is based on four basic criteria, our size, our need for prolonged care through adolescence, our protective abilities, and our, our, our search for quality food sources. And our highly developed brains help us to think in more abstract ways to solve problems. Let's dig into each of those a bit more. When it comes to our size, our size is such that we can stand above and see predators a bit at our height. And we are small enough in mass and weight that we can move quickly to get away from those predators. So our size helps us quite a bit. And for prolonged care, we have what is called a eutherian um, characteristic. Eutherian, again, you, as in true for Greek, right? Therian is actually the Greek word for beast, a true beast. Well, that doesn't really help us to remember, but eutherian is related to the use of a placenta for reproduction and the skeletal mod modification that allows for a prolonged pregnancy in females. So that that eutherian characteristic of Homo sapiens, it, that sets up a prolonged care scenario, which works into a prolonged adolescence of learning skills and learning how to relate and behave in a group environment, which is very helpful for protecting and supplying the entire group. Third thing is protection and quality food sources. Because we're bipedal on two feet, we can search for food very efficiently. And because we have opposable thumbs, we can do a lot of fine motor work to use those um, to protect ourselves, but mostly to get into food sources and to develop food sources. Our flat, our flat face allows us to see stereoscopically what that means is depth perception to be able to see far ahead to find food and to protect ourselves as well um protecting ourselves even from um uh even from running and movement that we do our depth perception helps us quite a bit our highly developed brains are not just for protecting ourselves it is for problem solving, problem solving and tool making. We can abstract and reason things out by using many different sources of information. In this class, you use um, visual graphs and you use auditory lectures to create hypotheses that you can test out. That's abstract reasoning. You can use consequential thinking to think ahead on what consequences of your behaviors might be. You can look back on your behaviors and learn from them to work better next time. In addition, you have complex language skills so that you can adapt and work in groups effectively. 
So these characteristics are very adaptable to many situations, and I'll see you on the next video.